Hi everyone, welcome back to my Hacker Rank series. And today we are going to continue with the questions. So today we have a question called Counter Game. And from the get-go, I already know there's some lame story to try to, I don't know, increase our engagement or something. But yeah, um, I have read the question and it seemed like a pretty doable question and hence I'm recording it now. Let's see how fast I finish it. How quickly I can finish the question. So, yep, Luis and Richard have uh, have developed a numbers game, and they pick a number. So, okay, uh, Luis and Richard develop a number game. They pick a number and they check to see if it's a if it's the power of two. If it is, they divide it by two. If not, they reduce it by the next lower number, which is a power of two. Whoever reduces the number to one wins the game, and Luis always starts. So. The example they gave is one, three, two. Oh no, I don't like red. Let me change the color to something else. Okay, one, three, two. And since it's not a power of two, they reduce it by the next power of two, which is one, two, eight. So one, two, eight. And that gives me four, and four is a power of two, hence we divide it by two. So four becomes two. Two becomes one, and whoever one lands on, like whoever made the one, they win. So that's it. Um, there are a few different approaches to this question. First thing that we need to absolutely figure out is how do we decipher how many the power of two is it? So for this, you need some level of mathematics from like high school level math kind of thing. So two to the power of n, let's say some number, and let's say an another number, let's say nine. If, 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 if I were to find the closest n, I would need to you do this thing called log. So I can log this and it becomes two over here and log uh, nine over here and the n comes down. And in the end, I can just do something like this. Log nine, oh boy. And log two. If I'm not wrong, you should get something like three point something, something. Let me just take my calculator out. Log nine, log two. I'm getting 9 and a 9 and a 9. It just keeps going. Oh, no, sorry. 9925. Yeah, okay. The point is, the closest to the power of, like the n is 3.16 something. So the closest 2 to the power of something to 9 is 2 to the power of 3. Uh, this looks nothing like 2. Is 8, which is pretty damn close to 9. So that's why we're going to, we will be using this method to find out which is the closest power, two to the power number that exists next to this number that I'm looking at. So with all that being said, this is the hardest part of the question, like to find out this logic. And once this logic is done, I think the rest of the question is quite straightforward. So let's try to, actually, no, it's not so straightforward. There's a bit of, there's a bit more mechanics that we need to figure out, like how do we pass the thing and when do we pass the pass the beta or something? Because um, as you can see, it's Lewis's first turn at first. And if she's unable to make it into one, she passes it to someone else. But if she does make it into one, like if it if she reaches one, if she divides it by two and reaches one, she doesn't pass the beta, she just wins the game. So we need a way to like keep checking if it is one and make sure that we don't pass the beta accidentally. So, okay, uh, I think I've said a lot of things. Let me just come up with the answering mechanics first. So answering mechanics is gonna be something like this. Uh, they say Lewis starts first every time, right? Uh... Okay, who starts first? Is it always Lewis's turn first? Yep, okay, I'm, I'm gonna just go with Lewis's first all the time. So Lewis will start. 
Louis, Louis, oh, is it Louis? No, sorry, it's Louis. Richard. And with that, um, my answering mechanics is going, I'm, I'm also going to keep a counter. So count is going to start from zero. And I'm also going to, I'm not going to change the end, the, the end that they, that they gave. I'm going to assign it to a summer value. Summer is just my favorite go-to variable for something to aggregate. Uh, doesn't mean anything to sum. Maybe I should give a different name to that. Okay. So what's next up, I'm going to set my failing condition. I mean, uh, a condition to make sure that I win. Like I'm gonna need to break out of a loop because this thing has to go in a uh, recursive manner. So I can, I'm, I'm going to choose a conditional loop. The kind of winning condition being when summer is not equal to one. So as long as summer is not equal to one, I will keep going through this loop. And when going through this loop, what I'm trying to find is I'm going to find the divisor. Like I'm going to find the difference because either way I need to figure out like a weight. So basically I need to find out if it's a power of two. So how do I find if it's a power of two? Um, I need to do this thing, log whatever number divided by two log two. So log summer divided by log two Sorry, math.log. That would give me a number. So if it was a perfect, uh, if it's a perfect power of two, this value would be a whole number. Else it would be a float. Well, I mean, it will be a, there'll be a decimal point beyond this thing. But I cannot ensure that every single, like um, there's no way to like, like this by devising, by dividing itself by default, this thing will be a, will become a float. So I cannot just use the type uh, function in the Python syntax to figure out if it's a float or integer. This by default has become a float at this point since I used a divisor. So what I can do is I'm going to ground it. I'm going to flaw the value. So let's say my summer is five. Summer uh, math dot log five over log two. I'm going to get something like two something, something, something. But by flooring it, I'm just going to make it into two. Why do I do that? Because now I can take this whole thing and two to the power of that value and summer minus that. That way I can get the divisor. Divisor. Uh, okay, not really the divisor, but the modulus. The modulus, that means if I minus it off, if I, which, I, which is what they expect us to do over here, the next lower power is 128. So she subtracts that from 138. So 138 minus this value, I'm hoping it will be 128, two to the power of whatever value that is over here. That will be 128 in this case. That way my modulus will be four. And if my modulus modulus is not equal to zero. That means there is a remainder. Summer becomes modulus. Yeah. Else, summer becomes summer divided by two. With that being said, after doing all these fancy thingies, like uh, this by logic makes it makes, uh, should be, obeying the rules that the that they gave us. And uh, because if there's a remainder, that means if I divide it by the nearest two to the power item, that means I need to minus it off. So the modulus, I can just assign it to summer and that'll be looping through the while loop after subsequently. But if it is, if modulus is zero, I just need to follow this rule, which is to divide it by two. And that's what I'm doing over here. Now, with that being said, remember the condition that I said, that once someone wins, they don't pass the baton, they just win immediately. So what I need to do now is I need to check when to pass the baton. So if summer is not equal to one, 
then I pass the baton. So my count, I'm using it as the baton passing thingy. So if the sum is not one, I pass the baton. If not, I'm going to just um, keep it as it is. And yeah, with that, I can just return my answer already. I can answer and get count and see if it's even or odd. If it is even, that means it will be zero. I'll be rooting for Luis. If it is odd, I'm rooting for Richard. But let's say I'm just starting the game and the val summer's value is one. Count is zero. Summer will, it'll beat the winning condition in this case. And I'll just go to the answer. And answer is zero modulus two, which is still zero. So answer index zero is Luis. Works fine. Let's assume the number is now five. Five goes in, it fails the summer winning condition. It goes here, summer minus two to the power of two, which is four. Modulus becomes one. Summer is equal to one. And uh, if summer is not equal to one, I add it to count, but it is one. So I don't go through this. I just go back to the loop and see if it fails it. And yes, it does fail. And hence I return the answer, which would be, Still Lewis, is it? Yep, it's still Lewis. So yeah, this is how this question works. We don't, um, like normally I will try to keep running some tests intermediately just to know if I'm the right track. But in this question, I believe I'm quite confident. I'll be quite heartbroken if it doesn't, if I don't get a green tick now. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's hope it passes all of them. Yes, nice, it passed all the test cases. If at any point you guys are confused with my explanation, please do give me the feedback so that I can, I will know when to slow down and where to slow down when explaining a similar question in the future. And yeah, this was a fun question to work on. And yeah, we need, we might, we might need to bring in high school math time, uh, like, like here and there. And yeah, I, I normally enjoy these kinds of questions where we have to use some logarithmic this would most likely be the fastest method instead of doing some internal iterative loop or something. So, yep. Hope you guys enjoyed the question and let me know what else you'd like me to try and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.